Hey there! A while ago, I did a video entitled Goat Pens, I believe. Goat Pens Greatest of All Time. And I received a lot of requests from people who said they were very interested in an updated goat pen list. My ultimate pens. And I thought that would be a very good idea. Now, I, I thought about maybe doing a video on pens that I particularly reviewed in 2014, so the year in which I'm uploading this video, but I just went through my pens and I picked those that, those pens that to me are goat pens, greatest of all time pens. Now, a couple of things I have to say about that. Firstly, this is my list. You can disagree. Your mileage may vary. You may think that the Jinhao X450 is the greatest pen of all time and that's the ultimate pen. That's fine. You may also think that a $6,000 limited edition Visconti is the greatest pen of all time. That's fine. This is my list. And some pens that you may consider greatest of all time may not be on here. That's the first thing. The second thing I have to say is the pens, I'm looking at them right now, on this list, typically are relatively expensive. There are a few inexpensive ones on there, relatively inexpensive ones on there, but even those are not the cheapest out there. Does that mean this is a snobby list of only super high-end pens? No, but think about it. If I'm discussing greatest of all time pens, I'm talking about pens that you pick up and that make you go, wow, this is an impressive pen. Pens that you put to paper and that make you go, wow, this writes fantastically. You can get that in a $5 pen. You can also get that in a $500 pen or pens that are even more expensive. These are pens that I have inked up almost continuously. And yes, the average price of these pens is relatively high. I'm not going to list prices. You can look all of that up yourself, your favorite fountain pen retailer, etc. Okay, now without further ado, I think we should go through these pens. At the end of the video, I will upload a simple writing sample of every pen. That's just going to be a one sentence thing. Some pens that are on this list now were already on my previous list. But I think that list has been revised to a significant extent, I would say. I have here 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 pens. Last time I had 20. I'm going to keep it a bit short. Okay, now that I've already wasted three minutes of your time, let's look at the first pen. Visconti Opera Elements. I love this pen. It was my first serious fountain pen. If you uh, uh, have watched a lot of my videos, you, you know because I, I keep coming back to this pen. I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's, a, it's a relatively simple cartridge converter fill pen. It's not a fancy filling system, but I think the material is absolutely gorgeous. This one comes with a 14 karat gold nib. If you buy them these days, typically you'll get a palladium nib. I like the Visconti palladium nibs, but this 14K nib is fantastic. It's a two-tone nib, and it has a really nice amount of spring to it. This is just a medium. You can see from all the micro scratches that this pen has seen a lot of action. This has been with me on a lot of occasions, and I absolutely love, I, I love it. It's fantastically shaped grip. I enjoy it. Not the biggest Visconti out there, but definitely a nice pen, and I adore it. There are also, there's also a blue one, there's a black one, and there's a brown one, but I got the red one. All right, this is one of the less expensive pens on the list, the Faber-Castell Emotion. This is the Croco finish, and if I uh, focus there, you can see why. A simple pen, it's I think a pretty unique design. It's not something you see every day, but what makes this pen special is the nib. A simple steel nib. It's not a fancy material. Uh, it looks nice with the little uh, dots on them. I've always enjoyed that. But this nib is ultra smooth. This is probably one of the smoothest nibs I own. And that's why I love this pen. It's an odd shape. It's not the biggest out there. For me, it could be shaped differently. It could be bigger because posted it gets very top heavy because of the huge cap. But what makes this pen a goat pen is the smoothness of the nib. If you ever have a chance to try it out, check it out. Everyone, I give this pen and say, look, try it. Everyone falls in love with the nib. So there you have it. That's goat. 
Another GOAT is this one, Italics Parsons Essential. Very simple pen, piano lacquer, this can only be obtained from mrpen.co.uk, that's not a commercial, but it's the only place you can get this stuff, made by, it, uh, the brand is Italics, uh, Mr. Ford, the owner of uh, Mr. Penalcota UK, actually grinds the nibs himself if you request special nibs. And the reason this pen, to me, is a goat pen, first of all, I love the shape. A great section, very comfortable, not a huge pen, not a huge diameter, but it looks nice. It's brass with black piano lacquer, giving it a nice... Uh, it's not super heavy, but it gives it a very robust feel. And what I love about this pen is that you have no less than 17 different nib options. Try finding a modern pen that has so many. You don't just have your regular fine, medium and broad. You have italics, you have obliques, you have cursive italics, you have all kinds of stuff. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. And this just goes to show, look at that. Yes, it's an Iridium Point Germany nib. And now we can all start to complain about Iridium Point Germany nibs. But when it's cut well, when it's ground properly, no problem whatsoever. This is an italic broad, another super smooth, ultra pleasant nib to use. And that's why for me, the Italics Parsons Essential is a goat pen. And this is probably the cheapest pen on the list. I think, on top of my head, 39 US pounds, but well, uh, some US pounds, what the hell is that? Um, pounds sterling. So check it out. Okay, the next pen on the list. This is an Edison Menlo. I love the Menlo design. Um, there have been some people who pointed out that this, this filler system has been used before. Yes, I know that. I know that's not unique, but it is this filling system on a modern pen, which I enjoy. Um, it's a vacuumatic type filling system, holds a lot of ink. This pen will not run out of ink anytime soon, and this particular material, this finish, I love. It's translucent, and you can put a nice blue ink in, it matches it very, very well. Now, the reason I have this pen on here is twofold. This is a double uh, um, goat thing because not only do I love the pen, but it takes number six nibs. And what I've put on here is actually a Franklin Christoph music nib. And that, of course, does not come with the pen. You cannot buy the pen with that nib, you have to buy that nib separately from Franklin Christoph. But that nib has left a serious impression on me. Very impressive, excellent flow, 1.9 millimeters, that's very broad, good for calligraphy, a lovely, lovely nib. One that really impressed me. So this is two goats in one pen. See what I did there? Oh yeah. Okay, the next one, the Conid Bulk Filler. The Conid Bulk Filler is a very interesting pen. These are expensive pens. They're not cheap. However, what you get is a very cool filling system. I've not inked this up yet just because I want to show you if you're not familiar with it. Let me make that focus. What you do is you unscrew this bit. Then that little rod goes in there. You keep screwing. It unlocks that black part. You push it back. Put in the ink bottle. Pull it back. And then reverse the screwing operation, lock this in place, and you can fill pretty much the whole barrel with ink. I have been unable to fill the whole barrel with ink, but what I will say is it's a cool filling system, it is pretty revolutionary, and it gives you a large ink capacity. I love these pens. Uh, there's a, a couple of new models out now, including an oversized model, which definitely makes me drool. This one has a titanium nib. And I love the titanium nib. They are not for everyone. They give a relatively large amount of feedback. That's not a cone nib thing. That's just with any titanium nib I've used. But they also offer a nice amount of line variation. You have to be careful not to spring it. But they're very interesting to use. Very expressive nibs. And I think all of that makes this pen a goat pen. Okay, the next pen in the lineup. This is a Mont Blanc 146. This is a Mont Blanc 146 90th anniversary edition. This has rose gold trimmings. Does that add anything to the writing experience? No. But it looks nice. Um, I, I can show it to you here. The rose gold is not the uh, extremely in-your-face rose gold that some pens have, but it's definitely different from yellow gold. You see it has a very nice nib here, very nice engraving, and it's not blood on there, don't worry. 
Uh, this is an oblique double broad, a nib that's going to be discontinued in 2015, I understand. Very impressive pen. I was very impressed by the way this writes. Nice, expressive nib. Um, very, very nice line variation. Well ground. I have not really had this skip. Oblique nibs are not really my thing, but this was a gift to someone I love very much. And um, so, as long as she enjoys the nib. But in any case, for me, probably in the writing sample, I wouldn't be surprised if it skips a little. I'm not oblique things and not re nibs are not really my thing. However, for her, it doesn't skip, doesn't do anything. So if you if you if obliques are your cup of tea, you're probably gonna enjoy that one. Apart from that, it's just a 146. But I think that's a very nice model. It's comfortable. It's comfortable in the hand, and it's for me a very nice size. The 149 is bigger and maybe even nicer, but is very large, especially for longer writing sessions. Okay, the next one in the lineup. It's another Visconti. This is the Visconti Homo sapiens, but this is not the lava model. This is the crystal. Uh, I don't think there's any actual crystal on here, but it is see-through, it's transparent. What you get here is a nice large pen. It's not a super oversized, but it's definitely not a small pen. It has the power filler system of Visconti, which I really enjoy. That means you, you unscrew this, there's ink in there, I can't show you. Pull it out, pull it back in, creates a vacuum, and it pops at some point when, when you push the plunger past a certain point, then it draws up ink, holds a lot of ink, and I think the material is really, really attractive. So here you go, you can see the ink sloshing around in there. I think it's very attractive. Center band looks very cool. It was a limited edition. Again, not a cheap pen. It has a palladium nib that's very nice, very pleasant to use. It doesn't really skip. Uh, nice, responsive. Flexes a little bit making for a very pleasant writing experience and also a very nicely shaped pen. Okay, the next pen in line, a brand that has, unfortunately, for lack of a better word, snuffed it. The Conway Stewart, uh, it's, it's, I think it, these were very interesting pens, but the, 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 the brand is gone, unfortunately. This is the Winston, and the Winston is a nice oversized pen. It has a brass lining on the inside, making it heavy, uh, it's big, it's robust, it feels well made, I like it. Um, a, a nice nib, this required a bit of work, like all Conway Stewart nibs I have tried, but it's abroad and now I have it right the way I like it to write, and it's fantastic. Now look at this material. I think it's very hard to look at this and not fall in love. Beautiful. Filling system, rather simple, it's a built-in converter. So you can unscrew this. There are people who have disassembled this. I have not had, uh, well, not so much the guts, but the, the desire to do it because I find it relatively easy to clean. There's a little turning knob there, and if you look inside, you can see there's a, a, a converter just stuck in there. That's all. I think it's a wonderful pen, especially because of the robust feeling, and that's something that's very hard to convey in video. But if you ever have a chance to hold someone else's or try one out, or maybe you have one, then you know what I'm talking about. Very nice, robust feel. Okay. The next one in line. This is a pen by Omas. This is the My Lord. And I absolutely love this pen. Uh, they come in a couple of finishes, but uh, this is the Arco finish. And I'm now trying to line up the pattern. Can't make it. Doesn't, it doesn't really matter. The Arco celluloid, I think, is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Look at that. It's a beautiful 12-sided pen. It's faceted, and especially that kind of stuff that makes pen lovers drool. An actual piston filler, and the newer models have a somewhat complex system which is also kind of like a converter build-in. If you take a pen apart you will see that. It doesn't really matter. Draws up a decent amount of ink. Haven't had it leak or anything. Fantastic. Has an 18k nib. This is a broad nib and it I think it looks nice with that with the, the uh, uh, what do you call that? Fletching? Is it Fletching? Fletcher? I always forget. It's the stuff on arrows. Um, it looks very cool and it writes wonderfully. Uh, there were not really any issues with this pen out of the box. Uh, no baby's bottom or anything. It wrote well, responsive. With Omas nibs, be a little careful. They can spring and I have had that happen. 
So you have to be a little gentle with them, but with very mild pressure, you can definitely get some nice line variation. I, I love this pen. I, I also love the uh, the clip, um, which is which has a little wheel there, pretty unique shape. I think that looks very cool. And in all, I think it's a nice, decently uh, sized pen. And again, that aqua celluloid, that's quite something. All right, the next pen is yet another Visconti, and I think this one was on the previous list, but if not, then it is now. Here we have the Visconti Divina Desert Springs. Uh, the Divina comes in a couple of finishes too, but this is the Desert Springs. This material is jaw-dropping. They really did a fantastic job, not only in the shape of the Divina, but just the overall wavy form, uh, these facets that, that gently rotate across the barrel. It's fantastic. Now this is not the limited edition, this is the standard edition and the difference here is that this just has a built-in converter that you use to fill and the limited edition had a power filler which is a bit cooler. I will show you the nib, however this is the nib that actually came in the Opera Crystal. Uh, I have switched those nibs around. Um, but it came, I had got mine with a 1.3 millimeter palladium stub nib which is a joy to use. Um, I love it. Also cool at the top you have the Visconti My Pen system and, I, and we put something on here that actually resembles the, or actually matches I should say the finish of the pen a little bit because it just has a Visconti logo, it's a magnet, you can pull it off, you can buy additional stuff for it. Alright, oh and by the way I also think the size of this pen is great. It's a nice oversized beautiful pen and relatively light because there's not a lot of metal in this. Not so light is the next pen. That was a good segue. Uh, this is the Yardelet Viceroy Grand in the Victorian finish. A gift from uh, a viewer, the same person who gave me this pen. Um, and I, I love this pen. Everything you see here that looks like silver, looks like silver because it is. Solid sterling silver. It's a very attractive model. It's a heavy pen. You can feel the weight of the silver. The nib is 18 karat gold, which is then nickel plated to make it match that um, the, the trimmings of the pen. Simple filling system, cartridge converter, which for a relatively expensive pen like this, you might expect uh, a piston filler. It has cartridge converter filled. I have no issues with that. Uh, it's it, it works well, simple enough, and it has a fantastic nib. I'm very impressed by the, the smoothness of this broad nib. Also, no baby's bottom. It doesn't skip. It doesn't hard start. It writes all the time, every time. A beautiful pen. Definitely a conversation piece. Uh, the material, the finish. I mean, the material is silver. That's cool. But the finish is really nice. It's a larger pen. I wouldn't really post this because then it gets super heavy. Also pretty big. But wonderful in hand. Very robust to me. A goat pen just because of the looks but also the way it writes okay we're down to three the last three models one of them may not surprise you because I think I have sung its praise quite a lot the Pelican Souverain M1000 I like this pen I think it's a great size uh, I have added another nib I used to have the double broad and what is on here now is the unfortunately discontinued triple broad. Uh, you may be able to see there from the tipping how huge this is. This is a very broad nib, beautiful two-tone. I love this pen. I love this pen. It's a piston filler. Um, I think it's a great size. It's not too heavy. Very nicely balanced. You can post it if you want, but then it becomes really big, so I typically don't do that. To me, a magnificent pen. A really nice, reliable writer. And it's not even as huge as you may think it is. Some people have the idea that an M1000 is something that requires a little crane to support it when you write it because it's so heavy and big. It's not. It's really not that huge, but it's a beautiful size. Okay, now we come to the final two goat pens. And I have saved my favorite two pens for last. And these are pens requires a sip of tea here. These are pens that I have inked up always, every day. And that's saying a lot because I have a couple of pens, I have a bunch of pens that I really like, but these are always inked up, always with me. 
The first of these is the Omas Paragon. This is the larger brother of the myeloid that I've shown earlier, except this is not the Arco celluloid. This is just black celluloid. Doesn't matter to me. I find it stunningly attractive. Yes, it's black and gold. We've seen it before. Mont Blanc does it. Sailor does it. I know that, but to me, the whole pen, the whole package is fantastic. What I love about this, of course, you have that same clip again, you have the same wheel again, just like I've shown you on the uh, My Lord. Here we have, uh, it actually says Omas and the Paragon on the center band. It has those 12 facets again, it has the piston filler on it, or in it, it is a piston filler, whatever you like to call it. But to me, the size of this pen is magnificent. Two features that I really like. At the end of the section, you have that really nice 12-sided ring again, um, and I love the nib. It's an 18K nib, and it's a fine nib. Now, if you've seen a bunch of my videos, you know that I adore broads. I love broad nibs. I love writing with broads, but this fine is stunning. It's absolutely wonderful. No feedback. Beautifully, wonderfully soft, smooth, rich ink flow. Fantastic. It's not a gusher. It's just a fantastic ink flow, and I love this pen. The second thing I absolutely love about the uh, section is just its shape. Very comfortable. It's all metal. Some people find that it gets a little slippery. I haven't really had that. For me, this is a perfectly sized pen. It fits the size of my hands well. It's wonderful to hold. Very comfortable. A relatively girthy section. If you have larger hands, it's probably something you'll probably enjoy. Fantastic. Wonderfully tuned in. So I think... Again, I've sang the praise of this pen quite enough now. A beautiful, wonderful pen. And then there is the final one. And that is one that I think if you follow, for example, my Instagram account and those kinds of things, you, uh, you could kind of guess, because I got it this year, relatively late in the year, but this pen has literally blown my mind. This is a fantastic pen that I adore, that I love, that is with me all the time, that I love using, and that pen is the Visconti Opera Master. This pen is breathtaking. It was a limited edition. There were only 888 of these, so that's not that many. You will have to find a look hard for them if you want one. They are expensive. You can find them on eBay, you can find them in some fountain pen stores, but I love everything about this pen. Now, bear in mind, this is not a small pen. The Master is a significant pen. It's heavy. It's big. It has a lot of girth. Um, looking at the section, I'll show you the section of the uh, Opera Elements, which is also a pen in the Opera series of Visconti. And I think this kind of says it all. Right. The Opera Elements, it's not, I, I said something along the lines of it's not a super large Visconti, and it's not, but it's not a very small pen either. It's not a pocket pen. This is a full-size pen. This pen is huge. It has the girth, it has the weight, it has the length, it has everything. The section is very big. The nib is a beautiful two-tone, double-broad, palladium nib that's very smooth and very pleasant. Now with a double broad I was a little scared of baby's bottom over polishing of the nib tines. This pen doesn't skip. You put it to the paper, it writes. Again, all the time, every time. Very impressive. The one thing I'll say about it is it's a little heavy and the issue with that is that for longer writing sessions this can wear out your hand, wrist, and that's why I also carry the Paragon which is much much lighter. Power filler, two ink reservoirs, this thing holds a crazy amount of ink, and that's a good thing, because with the double broad nib, it gushes through ink like there's no tomorrow. Beautiful, wonderful, similar material to that Homo sapiens crystal that I've, I've shown you before. Um, I absolutely love it. They came in other materials, too. Uh, there was a, a blue one and a brown Opera Master, but I think this is a fantastic finish. Okay, there you have it. My updated list of goat pens, a lot of them are not on there. The Twist B is not on there. It may have been on there before, but it's not on there now. Tastes differ. Tastes vary and tastes change. 
The Parker 51 is not on there, and I want to mention that specifically because I'm sure people are going to comment on that. The Parker 51 is a fantastic pen. It was revolutionary. The only problem is it doesn't do anything for me. Again, tastes vary. These things happen. That's the cat. These things appreciate a Parker 51 for what it is. It was revolutionary at the time. They're very robust. They're still right. That's fantastic. It's just a model that doesn't do anything for me. And that's all there's to it. Now, we're going to move on. I'm going to do writing samples with all of these pens. I hope this was useful. If it wasn't useful, I hope at least it was a little bit of eye candy. Writing sample up next. I hope this was useful. And I'll gladly see you later. Meh! Goat pens. Okay, so here we go with the goat pens. Let's start with the Visconti. Opera Elements. This ink is... Um, Caveco sepia, I like a lot. You can see the wetness of this pen, non-adjusted nib, this was out of the box. Because this is already a long video, I'm not going to do a lot of writing. I'm just going to leave it at this. But because I mentioned the springiness of this nib, that's the amount of line variation you can get out of this, which I think is very impressive for a uh, 14K gold nib. No flex advertised. One thing that you should bear in mind is that uh, this pen will run dry. The feet can't keep up very well if you flex it a lot. Okay, then we have the... Um, I haven't uh, used this pen for a few days, so I need to prime the feet a little bit. There we go. Here we have the... Faber Castell E Motion. Oh, just for the record, this was a medium nib. This is a broad nib. I'll put that in the margin. Um, this is the Croco. The ink is Caveco Black. Line variation. There is a little bit, but it's a relatively stiff nib. Okay. It's a really nice, smooth nib. It always impresses me. And of course, a black ink does not really bring out the shading capacity of a nib, but because it's relatively broad, it's a decent shader. Okay, then we have the italic broad nib on this italics. Parsons Essential. The ink is Ackermann Mauritshuis Magenta. I'm just going to write down Mag. That doesn't stand for maggot or anything. Um, pretty stiff nib. So you can't really uh, get a lot of line variation out by flexing it. But because it's an italic, you get nice line variation anyway, as you can see here. That was a weird Y, but lazy dog. Another very nice, very smooth writer. Let's move on to this Edison. Uh, this So this would be the... Um, uh, I'm going to write down uh, Franklin Christoph M for music. and But this is on Edison. There's nothing wrong with the uh, Edison nibs, by the way. There's not a specific reason I put the nib on this pen. It's not because I dislike the original nib, it's just that I like the nib a lot and I like the pen a lot. So here we have an Edison Menlo, um, and the uh, ink is uh, Noodler's Liberties Elysium. It's a very poor L, sorry. It doesn't really spring. I mean, there's no springiness to it, but it has a lot of line variation. As you can see here, 1.9 millimeters is really broad. But as you can see, it can still use for everyday writing. Very nice, 
very smooth and very wet nib that just writes perfectly. It's, it's, it doesn't really run dry. Very, very impressed by that. Okay, then we have the oblique double broad. As I said, I'm not really an oblique writer, so but this is the Mont Blanc uh, Meisterstück. One forty-six, aka Le Grand. I'm not going to uh, write down 90th anniversary because I'm sure you can figure out how to write that. Uh, and the ink is Mont Blanc uh, Poppy Corn, Corn Poppy Red. But I'm just going to write down Poppy Red because I'm running out of space. Nice smooth writer. which also has some decent line variation as you can see there it's a somewhat springy nib okay the Visconti this is a medium and this is the Visconti Homo Sapiens uh, and that's the, the, the crystal of course I haven't really talked about uh, nib materials here, but I have said that in the, in the talk part of this video, so you should be able to figure it out. And the ink here is Visconti Blue. Oh, there we go, skipping. What's that? Visconti Blue. Alright. Nice, smooth. And these palladium nibs offer quite some line variation, as you can see there. Okay, here we have the Divina Desert Springs. Now bear in mind, this is the nib that came on the Opera Crystal. So this is not the nib that comes with the pen. If you want to see that in action, check out my review of the Divina Desert Springs. And this would be a 1.3 millimeter uh, stub. Um, but again, not the one that came with the pen. This is the Visconti Divina Desert Springs. Uh, this nib that came in the Opera Crystal is the Chromium 18 nib, not the Palladium nib that came with the pen. And this is a much harder nib than the Palladium. And the ink is Diamine Oxblood. is a very nice reddish brown and this nib is very nice too but again harder than the nib that came with the pen okay then we have the conid bulk filler and this is a medium and this is that uh, titanium nib I was talking about Of course, I could have put the same blue ink in every pen, but I thought this would make a little bit more visually appealing to have different ink colors. The Conid Bulk Filler, and the ink is... Iro Shizuku Momiji. And you have to be a little careful not to spring it, but a titanium nib can also give you quite some nice line variation, as you can see there. There will be high resolution pictures on my website, so if you want to check this out in more detail, then you can check it out there. Alright, here we have the 18K broad on this Conway Stewart Winston. This is uh, Gerbin uh, Vert Empire. Lovely pen.
lovely nib, very smooth. The lazy dog, I can hardly fit it in, but believe me, it says dog. All right, we're nearing the bottom of the page. Here we have another broad, and this is the Omas. My Lord, and the ink is Diamine Burnt Sienna. Very nice. Responsive nib. Again, you have to be a bit careful. You can spring these relatively easily, but it has very nice line variation, I would say. Okay, we're almost at the end of the page. But I can fit in one more. This is another broad, and this is the Yardo Lead Viceroy Grand Victorian finish and this is Visc Blue. It's another Visconti Blue. I mean it's the same Visconti Blue as Visconti Blue but it's another pen inked up with Visconti Blue, just to be sure. I love this nib. It, it doesn't really yield, it doesn't really have line variation, it's not very springy I mean, you can squeeze out a little bit of line variation, but it's, it's relatively hard. But I absolutely love its smoothness, and it's very nice, um, the way it glides across the paper. And as this is the end of the page, let's just put dog on the next line. Whoa, did you see that? There was a blob of ink flying out there. Well, I did just ink it up. I've never really had this pen leak. There we go. That's why there's always tissues at hand while doing reviews. We have three pens left. I'm going to gently tear out this page so that I won't smear it. And we continue on the next page. And we continue with... the triple broad Pelican Souverain M1000 in um, uh, Rohre und Klingner Alt Gold Grün. Hardly fits, but we get it on the page. Well, I think it's clear that this nib is a bit of a gusher. It also sings. And um, it's not exactly fine. This is a broad one. And as you can see, you can squeeze out quite some line variation there. It railroads a bit, but I noticed that it didn't really draw up much ink. I, I didn't dip it deeply enough. That's what happens with such a huge nib. Okay, then we have one of the very, very, very few fine nibs that I actually like. On the Omas Paragon which you may hear is a bit more feedback as I write, but there's no scratch whatsoever. Such a delicious nib to use. It's almost erotic. Here we have Mont Blanc Lavender Purple. And even with this very fine nib, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. A joy, a joy to use. You can squeeze out a bit of line variation, but it's a relatively stiff nib. Okay, and then the final one, the final pen. Double broad. And what we have here is nothing else than my favorite pen of all time. The Visconti Opera Massa 23K Palladium, and this is a private reserve DC. Uh, I'm going to write Super Show Blue. That's a wonderful blue ink. I absolutely love the red sheen. I 
I'm actually writing between two lines to give you an idea of how big a nib this is, how wide a line it lays down. I absolutely adore this pen, as may be clear. Uh, line variation. You can see you can squeeze out quite a lot. I absolutely adore this pen. Okay, there you have it. Goat pens, my absolute greatest of all time. The 2014 edition. This was a very long video. I hope I haven't bored you to death. Again, I hope that at, le at the very least this has been a bit of eye candy. Um, and um, gladly see you in the new year. Bye!